Are you willing to undertake a dangerous mission behind the enemy lines, knowing you may never return alive? What you have just heard is the question asked during the war to agents of the OSS, ordinary citizens who to this question answered, yes. This is Cloak and Dagger. Black Warfare. Espionage, international intrigue. These are the weapons of the OSS. Today's story, The Trojan Horse, is suggested by actual incidents recorded in the Washington files of the Office of Strategic Services. A story that can now be told. August 1942. A report to OSS headquarters in Casablanca from Agent Henri Fontaine in France. Contact with girl Gabrielle Monet was made in the Bluebeard Cafe in Paris. I went there alone on the evening of the 15th. I sent her a note with a waiter asking her to come to my table when she'd finished her song. Then I sat and waited. German officers were spread about the room as they were spread about all of occupied France. <laughs> I wondered what they would say if they knew why I had come. You send me this note, eh? Oui, mademoiselle. Will you join me? Why not? I drink with anyone these days. What will you have, eh? What have you? Let me taste from your glass. It is very bad wine. Huh? <laughs> you are right. Oh, the only time a girl may get good wine nowadays is when she drinks with the Bosch. Ah, never mind, I'm not thirsty. I enjoyed your song. Is that what you wanted to tell me? I think you are wasting your time here in Paris. Ah, Paris is wasting our time on Paris these days. I can offer you a better position in Casablanca. What did you say? Who are you? My name is Henri Fontaine. I, too, have a good position with the American OSS in North Africa. What are you saying? Before the Germans came to France, I was a poor poet. They did me a service. Now I'm a rich spy. You sit here in a room full of Germans and tell me this? What makes you think I will believe you? What makes you think I won't turn you over to the Germans if I do, huh? <laughs> Mademoiselle, I am not such a brave man. Neither am I a fool. We have kept you under observation for months. We know you better than you know yourself. Is there anything you'd like to know about yourself? What do you want of me? On our side, we have only the very best. Forgerers, counterfeiters, cutthroats, and uh, spies. <laughs> Will you join us? Ah, uh, just tell me what you want me to do. Agent Henri Fontaine in France to Agent Steve Lytel in Casablanca. Arrangements have been made to transport the girl Gabrielle Monet to the south of France and then to Casablanca. Awaiting further instructions. Over. Bonjour. The roses will bloom early this year, I think. Oui, but uh, not too early, I hope. Good, good. I have been waiting for you. It is dark. I can't see you. And is the girl with you? She is here. Gabby, say something so our friend will know you are here. I am tired. 
Did you have difficulty reaching my safe in Paris? Uh, not too much. With swarms of displaced persons all over France to mingle with, and a slight bit of help along the way from the underground, it, it was not too bad. Good, good. Now follow me. I will take you to the fishing school. But I'm I know, so... I know you're tired. Cheer up, Gabby. You'll have a nice long trip by water to rest up. Oh. And then another nice long trip by auto to oh. Casablanca. Oh, I like automobiles. In the old days, I liked nothing better than a, a pleasant ride. But Gabi did not like the automobile trip to Casablanca. It was probably nothing like the old days. I drove up front alone while she was fitting the trunk of the car behind gasoline drums. <laughs> there were gunny sacks and a Moroccan rug thrown over her. Across everything, a heavy canvas cover lashed down with just enough air left for her to breathe. We drove that way over rough roads for several hours. When it got dark, I pulled over to a side lane and let her out. Gabby, come out, come out. Oh, oh, my back. It is broken. I, I will gladly um, massage it for you. Uh, you are too kind. Not at all. No, thank you. Ah, pity. Why did we stop? To give you a chance to uh, stretch your legs. And a cigarette, if oh, you want one. Oh, I would die for one. Give, 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 give. I have one lit here. Ah. Uh, Mille merci. You see? I try to be gentle. <laughs> I try to make up for the inconvenience I am causing uh, you. Ah, ça c'est drôle. I remember what another poet once said. A German, by the way, but uh, not a Nazi. His name was Goethe. What did he say? He said, be gentle with women. Remember, they were made from a broken rib. <laughs> I am not amused. I'm sorry. You are always smiling. Do you enjoy the war, huh? I am a poet. There is poetic excitement in being behind the lines, working underground. I enjoy being a spy. Well, I am no matter hurry. You will do. You still have told me nothing. Why did they send for me? You remember a German named Paul Vogel? Paul? What do you know of him? Tell me. Not now. The time is late. But I must Throw know. Away your Why did you mention this? I said his... later. We have a long journey ahead. If we pass the border post, I will tell you. If we do not, <laughs> the words and minutes would only be wasted. Altala. I thought I would never reach the border. It's been a long trip. Where are you headed? Casablanca. Do you anything to declare? No, nothing. Let me see your passport. Here you are. All of a sudden, I spotted a small black dog sniffing and whining at the trunk of the car where Gabriel was hidden. The customs officer had not noticed him, and I knew I had to find some way to keep him from noticing. Ah! One becomes stiff after so long a ride. While he looked over my passport, I went to the rear of the car, picked up the dog by the scruff of the neck, and uh, started to pet him. Well, your, your passport seems to be in order, but what's the matter with Joff? Oh, nothing. Perhaps he does not like to be picked up. <laughs> no. If he did, he wouldn't try to bite you. Better put him down. go back to sniffing around that trunk. I felt like strangling that cute little black puppy. Well, put him down. I, uh, I have taken a fancy to him. Um, how do you feel about selling him to me, eh? Huh? Well, I... Uh, you, you, you are serious, monsieur? Oui, I like him. Come, come, how much, eh? Oh, take him. There are two more like him around somewhere. Uh, thank you. He will liven up the journey. Wait. Huh? Before you go. Yes? What is in your trunk? Huh? 
I said what is in your trunk. Let me put the dog in the car, and then I will show you. The trunk, I will show you. You see? Gasoline drums. Yes, I see. Very well. Close the trunk. I may go? Of course. Thank you again for Joff. August 27th, 1942. Report to OSS headquarters in Washington from Agent Steve Lytell in Casablanca. Fontaine and the girl arrived. I knew as soon as she walked in that Paul Vogel could not have forgotten her. I only hoped her memories of him weren't too strong. Now, as you know, Miss Monet, this is an international zone. We are, in effect, neutrals. In Casablanca, we pass each other in the streets. Germans, Americans, Vichy, and Free French. You can imagine what a hotbed of international intrigue we have here. Oh, I, I know nothing of that kind of intrigue. Then perhaps we can broaden your horizon. Hold it, Henri. Now, listen to me, Yebby. The head of the German Armistice Commission in Casablanca is a man named Paul Vogel. Does that name mean anything to you? We knew each other once, before the war. Knew each other? He was an attaché to the German consulate in Paris. You almost married him once, isn't that so? That is my business. I'm afraid we've made it our business. Now, Gabby, we've kept close watch on you these past months, and we're sure that you're no Nazi or Vichy sympathizer. Oh, I hate them all for what they are doing to France. But Vogel, what are your feelings toward I, him? Well, I haven't seen him in years. That's not answering my question. If he is a Nazi, I have no feelings toward him. All right, then. Now, the open secret here in North Africa is the planned American invasion. The closed secret is where and when. Now, that's what Paul Vogel wants to find out for German headquarters. Well, I still don't understand what You're I... You're to... to tell him, Cherie. What? Henri's right. You're to take up this friendship with him once more. Oh. Give him all the information he wants. You'll well... get it direct from us. What? Now, Give rest assured, it'll be the wrong information. You understand now? Uh, I'm beginning to. Good. We have a job for you at the Three Lanterns Cafe. Now, starting tomorrow... Agent Henri Fontaine and I were at the Three Lanterns Cafe the next night when Gabrielle opened there. The cafe was packed, but even the crowd around the bar, officers with ribbon chests, waterfront riffraff, and black marketeers, all of them were quiet when she sang. She was wearing a red dress. And in the spotlight, her face looked smaller and whiter, and her hair looked blacker. There wasn't a man in the room who could take his eyes off her. I wondered how soon it would be before Paul Vogel came in and saw her, too. Yeah, a girl like that could make you forget the war, right, Steve? I've got a wife I can circuit. <laughs> can she wear red like that? My wife can be trusted. And this girl? She and Vogel were pretty close in the old days. I know my own kind. She can be trusted. I hope you're right. The success of the whole American invasion may hinge on it. A lot depends on how hard Vogel falls for that little bait up there on the bandstand. Steve, hmm? Vogel, he's just come in. That's all I wanted to see. Come on, let's get out of here. Hey, excuse us, uh, pardon, pardon. This table is free, waiter. It will do. We are Vogel. You wish to see the wine list? Oh, I... That girl. How long has she been here? Uh, the singer, you mean? She started only tonight. Tell her to come to this table when she's finished. <laughs> you understand? We oui, I understand. No, you don't. You only think you do. Go tell her what I said. And bring a bottle of your best wine. No 
my dear, it was you, Paul, when the waiter came to me. <laughs> How like you to walk back into my life so quietly after making so violent an exit. Ah, the world is small after all, Gabby. I'm amazed to find you in Casablanca. I can say the same of you. What are you doing here? I arrived here a few days ago, but I've been in North Africa for months. Tangier, Oran, Tunis, singing. How were you able to leave France yeah. after the occupation? You should know how well I always got along with Germans. Mm -hmm. You don't seem angry with me any longer, Liebchen. After that last time, six years ago... Uh, life is too short to be angry for too long at anyone. Mm -hmm. Besides, I was a fool to have been jealous over that silly blonde with the bad legs. I've even forgotten her name. Suzanne. Uh huh. I see you have not forgotten. Where's <laughs> Monsieur? Oh, it's our wine. Gabby, how good it is to be with you again. How good it is to be with you, Paul. Ah. For you? For me. Now. We will drink to what is to be, Liebchen. What is to be? You could have no better guide through Casablanca than I, Gabby. Come, what else would you like me to buy you from the marketplace? A scarf, perhaps? A gold scarf to put around your hair, yeah. Have you taken many girls to the marketplace, oh. huh? <laughs> Will you be forever jealous of me, Liebling? What is it, the French in you? Ah, it is the woman in me. <laughs> I imagine you are in great demand by the women here. The chief of the German armistice commission. How did you know that? I know more than you think. Oh? Would it interest you to know the name of one of the most important American agents in North Africa? Who? Steve Lytell. What do you know of him? I know him. And he knows the details of the planned American invasion. Come. I will buy you a gold scarf. Well, have you nothing to say of what I just told you? I knew that already. I, too, have agents. However, thank you for telling me. I can promise you more than a gold scarf if you find out additional information for me. Is this possible? It might be. Very possible. Agent Lytell in Casablanca to OSS in Washington. The girl, Gabrielle Monet, has been in the paid employ of the German government here for several weeks, according to our plan and we'll transmit to them the Dakar cover project. September 1942. Report to OSS headquarters from Agent Monet. I had a feeling that things were going too smoothly. I seemed to be holding my breath, waiting for something to go wrong. And on the night of the 29th, it did. Paul Vogel was in my room above the cafe. We were listening to my record of our favorite song. Oh, Liebling. Liebling. You'll have to go soon. It is late. Forget the time. Who would think it would come to this again, Gabby? After that day in Paris. <laughs> So. I remember that day. Mm. We showed poor judgment to argue out of doors. Mm. It was raining. <laughs> I got a terrible cold <laughs> in the nose. Oh, poor Gabby. Let me kiss that poor nose. Sherry. <laughs> oh, Paul, you really must go. But before you do, I, I have a paper for you in my purse. Dates when high officials will be in Casablanca. Stay I'll get a it moment. for you. I want to uh, talk to you. you. You're hurting my arm. Let Germany me go. Germany is Paul. paying you well for this information I know, you are Paul, giving us. Please. Some of it is useful uh, information, but none of it uh, is as important as I would like. I will try to do better. You had better do better. 
You know what would happen, Gabi, if I found out you were crossing me? I would not cross you. It is nothing oh, for me to my... twist your arm oh. like this. Such a small arm. Think what I could do if I really tried to hurt you. You hurt me now because you don't trust me. What do you want? You claim to know this American like that. I do. You claim you get your information from I him. Do. Is that all he gives you? What about his love? Oh. Does he give you that too? Paul, the shoe is on the other foot. Now it is you who are jealous. <laughs> oh, how foolish of you. Think, would I lie to you? Coming. Coming. Oh, coming. If you ever lie to me, I... I would rather see you dead at my feet than standing, looking at me, and lying. You hear what I say? Yes. Yes, I hear. I hear. No. No, no more wine. I must keep my head clear to think of what you have just told me. Now are you satisfied that I'm earning my money? Mm -hmm. Dakar. So the Americans will land in a few weeks at Dhaka. Very likely, very likely. Dhaka is strategically important. It will be more important if the German fleet is there to stop the invasion. Yeah, yeah. That bungled attempt at a landing under de Gaulle's leadership failed, so the Americans probably figure <laughs> we would not dream that they would try it again in the same place. <laughs> One American, Steve Lytell, does not dream you know all this. Hmm. Are you going to tell German headquarters? But of course, this is something they will want to know. He believes it, Steve, every word of it. Good. The German fleet is being sent to stop the invasion at Dakar. Good, Gabby. Good work. Steve, radio report. Justin from Gibraltar. What is it? <laughs> no, 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 no. Let me tell it, Joff. General Clark will rendezvous on October 21st at Point Agreed near Alger. You know what that means? Final preparations for the Iran invasion. Nothing must go wrong now. Nothing. November 4, 1942. Something very wrong happened. Paul came to my room just before I was ready to go downstairs to the cafe. Paul! Gabi, your friend Lytell has been playing you for a fool. Uh, you hear what I say? I don't understand. The invasion is not the car. I just learned myself it's to be Oran. Oran! And the German fleet, on my suggestion, is waiting in Dakar for oh, nothing. Paul. And will continue to wait Paul, for nothing. Paul, it can't be. Do you know be. what this will mean to me? Do you realize what the high command will do to me for please, this? Please, please, Paul. I'm ruined. Perhaps, perhaps your latest information was wrong about Oran. No, 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 no. It all ties in. They, the Americans, wanted me to believe that... Gabi, what had you to do with this? Now what are you saying? I'm getting tired of your suspicions. One day you trust me, the next day you don't. You're French? What kind of French? Instead of questions, ask yourself this. Would I betray you, Paul? Not Germany, but you think. Look at me. Look at your Gabby and answer. I... I... No, of course not. Not you. You wouldn't dare. There may still be time to stop the Americans at Oran. I must get back to headquarters and let them know by radio. I should have done that right away instead of coming here. Oh, have a drink first. No, no, uh, later. I'll be back. It later. will not be easy for you to tell the high command this. A drink will fortify you. Mm. <laughs> yes. Perhaps. Perhaps you're right. One drink, then. <laughs> Paul 
sat on the edge of a couch, his head in his hands. I remember thinking how very blonde was his hair, how large his hey, hands. Darling, let's speak your time. It was not difficult for me to drop half the L tablet from my purse into his glass as I poured the liquor Sorry, over please, it. Sorry, oh. Here you are. Doctor Shane. Poor Paul. Pauvre petit. <sighs> you look so tired. Drink. Where are you going? You put on the record you like. We played it so often lately, Paul, that one of these days it will just rise up in protest. <laughs> You're tired? Uh, no. No, why should I be tired? I must go now. I've had my drink. Hear my record through, then you will go. No. No, now. I must go now. You're so good to me, Gabby. You love me. You love me very much. His head had fallen on his arms and rested on the table. The tablet had begun to work as I knew it would. I got the automatic pistol that had been given to me by the Americans and... shot him twice through his very blonde head. <laughs> Report from Agent Gabriel Monet. Well, it ought to come any minute now. News of the invasion. I've had word that Eisenhower and Clark were in Gibraltar on November the 8th. I'll let you both know as soon as something comes through on the radio. Are you all right, Debbie? <laughs> Me, don't concern yourself. You did what you had to do. It took courage. Well, if I had thought about it longer, perhaps I would not have had the courage. You cannot know. I think I do. He meant a great deal to me. A long time ago. I killed him. Listen to me. I told you something once that the poet Goethe said. He also said this. Give up what perished long ago. And let us love what's living. Do you hear, Gabby? Do you hear? <laughs> That's it, the code name. Robert's arrived. The invasion's begun, do you hear? Did you hear, Gabby? Did you? Yes. Yes, yes, I heard. And once again, the report of an OSS agent is closed with the words... Mission accomplished. A further adventure in black warfare is next week's... Cloak and Dagger. Heard in today's story were Jane White, Barry Kruger, Leon Janney, Joseph Julian, Carl Weber, Raymond Edward Johnson, Guy Sorrell, and Bernie Gould. Script was by Winifred Wolfe. Music under the direction of John Gart. Today's true OSS adventure was based on the book Cloak and Dagger by Corey Ford and Alistair McBain. This has been a Lewis G. Cowan production under the supervision and direction of Sherman Marks. Stay tuned for the second big mystery, High Adventure, on NBC. NBC.